the German American experience. It's uh, the most up to date and comprehensive work on German Americans. Don Heinrich Tolzman records the essential facts in the history of this group from its first U.S. settlements in the 17th century to the present, beginning with the new age of discovery. This volume explores the earliest contacts between America and Germany, immigration and settlement patterns of Germany. Uh, Germans, foundations of German-American community life, their major involvement in the American Revolution, the role German-Americans played in our Civil War. Both world wars are chronicled, including anti-German hysteria and sentiment and the internment of German-Americans. The revival of German heritage and the renaissance of German-American ethnicity since the 1970s is surveyed, along with recent events, including the impact of German unification in the 1990 census. Tolzman also analyzes German-American influences on uh, agriculture, industry, religion, education, music, art, and architecture, politics, military service, journalism, literature, and language. Included as a commentary on prominent German-Americans, German names, sister cities, historical statistics, and much more. Highly entertaining and informative, this book is a must for those interested in their German heritage or American history in, ger in general. So, representing one-fourth of the population, German-Americans constitute the nation's largest ethnic group, according to the U.S. Census, with well over 60 million people claiming German heritage. In 26 states, they comprise at least 20% of the population, and in five states, they number more than 50%. Important statistics in understanding the role played by German-Americans in U.S. history. So... German American Experience by Don Heinrich Tolzman. Uh, the preface. Uh, a couple things. Let's see. In 1909, Albert B. Faust, a German American historian, observed that the prominence of German Americans in American history suggests the need of a record of the essential facts in their history from the earliest period of their settlements in this country to the present time. The prominence of German Americans is underscored by the fact that they constitute the nation's largest ethnic group and that their history reaches back to the very beginning of American history. Furthermore, the German heritage is readily apparent across the United States, especially in those states that became known as the German Belt. The German American experience aims to, provi to provide a basic outline of German American history together with the discussion of the major influences German Americans have exerted in American history since the 17th century. 1600s. It is intended for use as a text on the topic as well as a general historical introduction. The term gener uh, German American is used to refer to immigrants and their offspring from Germany, Austria, Switzerland, and other German speaking areas of Europe. Hence, the term German is used here in a linguistic, cultural, and ethnic sense to cover the totality of German speaking immigrants and their descendants. So German means German-speaking people, not necessarily from the country Germany uh, of today, but from Austria, Switzerland, uh, Germany. <laughs> um, I know my bloodlines is uh, Bavarian and Prussian, which are both German uh, areas, but also have uh, have African, 11% African, which is not in Europe, but the. Uh, 89% European is Bohemian and Austrian, in addition to the Bavarian and Prussian. So Bohemian is the Czech Republic, um, which is a, a important country during World War II, the Sudetenlands. Uh, that's when uh, capitulated the, the the Prime Minister of Britain capitulated. Not Winston Churchill, but Chamberlain, I think Chamberlain. I don't know, but uh, that's the the Czech Republic. Prague is the capital of the Czech Republic. Bohemia and Austria. So I'm Austrian, Bavarian, Prussian, uh, Bohemian, African. Those are my bloodlines. So the term German American is used uh, for lots of them. Uh, my motivation for publishing this work was the need for an up to date history of the German American experience for a work that would serve as a basic introduction. Uh, as well as the text, although Albert B. Faust, the German element in the United States 1927, served as a standard work for many years, has been quite out of date for some time of the works completed since Faust 
Theodore Hubner's The Germans in America, 1962, had aimed to summarize the encyclopedic uh, work uh, of, of Faust. But by now, it's clearly out of date. So it's the most up-to-date up version. Um, the it's published in 2000. So it's fairly recent, but fairly old, too. I mean, it's not it's not brand new, right? There's a chart here, immigration by countries from 1820 to 1985, and it lists the uh, the German Americans. I probably won't cartoon this thing, but like uh, German Americans are seven million immigrants uh, in German uh, from Germany to America. And actually, I was having a conversation with a lady today, and I'm not for sure if um, my my ancestors from Germany who lived. Uh, wasn't Ellis Island, but it was the other one. And I always forget it. G Castle Garden. Castle Garden it was where my ancestors ran into. It wasn't Ellis Island, but it was Castle Garden. And Castle Garden was before Ellis Island. And Castle Garden is where you got immigration papers and health checks and immunizations. And you could also go uh, sign up for the war, too. Uh, the Civil War, whatever war America w was having at the time. So at Castle Garden, and then from Castle Garden to Sanford Town, Kentucky in 1869. That's when my German ancestors uh, came to America in 1869. So well, I was having a discussion, and I was comparing how Germans were not the native whites uh, when they first got here. 1855 in Louisville, there was the No Nothing Riots, and it was the German-speaking Catholics and the Irish and the influx of immigration into Louisville. Uh, was making the native Protestant white uh, Anglo-Saxons uh, pissed off, and they were treating the Germans. I I made a comparison. Not it wasn't that they were treated like black people, but it was that they were treated um, like Mexicans because they had they spoke a different tongue, they spoke a different language, they were taking our jobs, you know, and I took our jobs. So like their competition for uh, work. Uh, so. 1869 is when we got here. Uh, Mexicans, uh, uh, Germans were like Mexicans, I think. Uh, I think that's a fair uh, comparison. When the Germans got here, they were not treated as equals. And in 1855, there was a violent attack against them where at least uh, several, um, you know, at least 20, several dozen uh, people had died, but some reports had even said over 100. Germans had been killed in the Election Day riots here in Louisville in 1855 on Bloody Monday. So 1855, they had a Bloody Monday here in Louisville. The Germans did. Yeah. So, so, and I think I think they are. I think I, mean, I made that comparison today, and I, I believe that to be true. I mean, I think the uh, so the Mexicans, you know, the the argument that the person I was talking to was making was that they were here illegally and now that wasn't fair. Now she had a personal experience where she had a car wreck with, you know, some illegal folks and she was mad that she was getting sued by them even though it was her fault they were illegal and so she had felt that they shouldn't even have been in the country so therefore, you know, why should she get sued? The cops also let them go and uh, she was frustrated. I mean, I know her story actually made it sound like, man, I feel like I would have been arrested if I was driving without license, you know, and didn't have any documentation. Uh, you know, so, um, I, so when I was thinking about my own ancestors, I'm not for sure if my own ancestors were illegal or not. I don't know if they, I mean, it was a 14-day trip, so I feel like as long as they made it to America, just the uh, voyage over, kind of like the Cubans, just as long as you make it. That's accomplishment itself. So I think that's that was the uh, original folks who had come over. So I, I don't know if they were, you know, legal or not. If there was even a legal process, or if they just accepted anybody and everybody. The Statue of Liberty says, you know, come one, come all. I forget the exact phrasing, but like, give me your huddled masses yearning to to breathe free, kind of the refuse, the kind of like your. Uh, uh, I guess whatever people, citizens that you don't want in your country, send them to America, and that's so. That's uh, those were my ancestors, <laughs> the, the Germans, um, 1869. So there's here's a shows. A, I got two maps here that shows the distribution of German immigrants in 1890 and in 1990. So in 1890, there was a few in Kentucky. Few there was a, mostly in Louisville and Cincinnati, the ones that was in Kentucky. 
Um, but it's mostly the, the I want to say, uh, the Mideast. They call it the Midwest, but it's that's the Mideast. So the Germans occupied the, the Mid, Mideast of America. 1890. This is uh, all the spots where the Germans were located in America. Right, so mostly in Pennsylvania and Ohio and Iowa and Illinois, Indiana. I guess uh, Michigan. Um, and in here, uh, 1990 is where the German Americans in uh, America are. So mostly right there in the middle, not mid east, mid west, but the the mid mid high, <laughs> the middle the middle high part of uh, of this vast land. So that's where the Germans are. So it's kind of funny that my uh, cousins would be Confederates since they, uh, um, you know, none of our ancestors, my German ancestors, these are the ancestors on my mother's side, since none of uh, the, their ancestors fought even in the Civil War. So they, they wouldn't be Union or Confederates. But the majority of Germans fought for the Union and the hometown of where the group showers had landed in Sanford Town was attacked by John Hunt Morgan. So the Confederates were attacking the Germans. Uh, Germans were more likely to be on the Union by like 75% rate, just like Kentucky was. There was more Kentuckians fighting for the Union than there were uh, fighting for the South. So, and they were in Sanford Town in um, Kenton County. And Sanford Town was the home of the first fire department of Kenton County and the first school. So the Sanford Town Germans was the first introduction to Kenton County schools. The first school in Kenton County was brought by the Germans and the first uh, fire department in Kenton County were brought by the Germans, which is northern Kentucky. It's uh, right at the tip of northern Kentucky. Covington, Newport uh, is in one of those counties. <laughs> I know that they're all in the north. There's Campbell County, Boone County, Kenton County, Covington, Bellevue, Newport, and they all kind of cross jurisdictional boundaries. But anyways, I've I've talked too much. <laughs> Introduction. Okay. <laughs> German Americans in in America. German Americans, right? President John F. Kennedy called America a nation of immigrants. And that's an appropriate designation since 55 million people have immigrated to America since the founding of Jamestown, Virginia in 1607. This represents the greatest migration of people in world history. Everyone in the United States is either an immigrant or a descendant of one. In approximately four centuries, a nation of immigrants and their descendants has grown to a population of 250 million. Oscar Hamlin once observed that he had set out to write a history of the immigrants in America and then discovered that the immigrants were American history. This points to the importance of immigration and ethnicity in American life. In short, to understand America, it is necessary to understand the history of the immigrations and the various ethnic groups that make up American society. Poet Walt Whitman, a bohemian, wrote, These states are the amplest poem. Here is not a nation, but a teeming nation of nations. Of the 55 million immigrants who have come to America, 70% came from Europe, or 38.5 million. Of this European migration, one-fifth, or 8 million, came from one of the German-speaking countries or regions of Europe. Hence, German immigrants constituted the largest single immigrant group in American history. Clearly, on a statistical basis alone, it is important to study the history of German immigration and settlement in America. The impact of the German-American heritage has, however, more than sheer statistical significance. In all periods of American history, the presence of German-Americans and their contributions to this country can be registered. The 1990 U.S. Census indicated that close to 60 million Americans reported that they were of German descent, thereby making German-Americans the largest single ethnic group in the United States. In 23 states of the Union, they form at least 20% of the population and are the largest single group in those particular states. So, German Americans, starting out. In German America, 
history.